Uh, hello everyone, my name is Jade Nubadiai, and today we will be discussing mental health and education and its impact on students across the globe. Uh, just a brief introduction before we start. Again, my name is Jade Nubadiai, and I will be a rising senior at Stephen F. Austin High School in Sugarland, Texas. Uh, a few things that I'm involved in include currently being the president of my school's speech and debate and National Honor Society, president and founder of an organization that creates student-led tutoring sessions and hosts fundraisers to give back to educators, co-community head for Walk with a Doc Foundation, which aims to educate the public of health issues through physical activities, and I'm currently performing research about common food allergens. I'm interested in internal medicine and hope to be a practicing physician and medical professor one day. Now, this presentation will discuss how the advanced education system in the past 20 years has promoted a negative learning environment associated with anxiety for students. This topic is critically important to global health today as the next innovators, thinkers, and even medical professionals of the next generation are being exposed to overly demanding and intensely competitive learning environments, dampening their learning progress and resulting in critical symptoms such as anxiety, stress, and depression. To start, mental health around the globe in advanced education systems has become increasingly more important as more and more students are starting to face negative repercussions throughout their educational journey. Garum Naki, a senior lecturer at the College of Medicine and Health Sciences at the University of Gondor and its associates presented the following studies. First, a cross-sectional study of 350 students in Malaysia found that the prevalence of depression, anxiety, and stress was 39.7, 67.1, and 44.9% respectfully. Another study conducted among 48,720 secondary school students in Baghdad, Iraq, revealed that the prevalence of depression, anxiety, and stress symptoms were 29.4, 40.6, and 51.1% respectfully. And lastly, according to an institutional-based cross-sectional study conducted among 265 undergraduate students at the RC University in Ethiopia, the prevalence rates of depression, anxiety, and stress were 52.3, 60.8, and 40.4%, respectively. Now, with such a widespread impact on students across the globe, many turn to the education system, which is now becoming more advanced and complex, as shown by the 65% increase of students taking advanced placement or AP courses over the past 10 years as the problem. It is important to note that correlation does not imply causation. However, with an increase in students taking more advanced classes, such as AP, there has subsequently been a 70% increase in reports of mental health in young people, implying that such courses could be causing the rise in such conditions. Now, before I go any further, I do just want to define what academic anxiety is. As described by the Ball State University, it is the feelings of worry, tension, or dread that are associated with academic settings or tasks. Such a definition should be understood with caution, as words like fearful or stressed out should not describe any aspect of an education system. Additionally, characteristics of academic anxiety are known to be high levels of stress, the disruption of academic and social life, and the impairment of complex cognitive thinking skills and processes. Now, despite the increasing number of students facing mental illnesses like academic anxiety, many are pushing aside their problems to continue pursuing their educational careers, ignoring the growing mental crisis that they have within them. As stated by psychologists Thomas Tremaro per music and Derek Lusk, extreme resilience could drive people to become overly persistent with unattainable goals. Although we tend to celebrate individuals who aim high, it is more effective to adjust one's goals to achievable levels and give up on others. The education system is pushing the younger generation to achieve high grades and test scores that might never be attainable, leading them to push aside the things that matter and develop harmful habits that could impair their learning. According to Heifer Bembunti, an assistant professor of educational psychology at Queens College at the City University of New York, Students with higher course grades were more likely to ignore the things that they enjoy for studying and schoolwork. Plus, in contrast with the education system creating such prevalent anxious feelings in students to achieve high grades, higher anxiety levels resulted in lower course grades. And so with such hopelessness becoming increasingly present in student populations, many are performing acts of harm to escape the educational prison that they are placed in as there are lacks of intervention programs to help. As seen, 2,320 students died by suicide in India 
due to a lack of such programs. Additionally, according to the National Center for Education, in-school intervention programs have not been enough, representing a limitation, as there is a lack of fiscal resources and cultural support. Therefore, a holistic approach needs to be implemented. Influenced by work from psychology researchers Dr. Keenan Bobel and Hatiz Odasi, the following steps should be taken. First, families need to be made aware of the struggles the education system is imposing on their students and learn how to better help their children manage with anxiety. Next, students themselves need to adopt a new mindset, placing less importance on striving for the absolute best, learning that not having perfect grades is okay and that life comes with struggles. And lastly, the root of the problem, the education system needs to be restructured to reduce the strict and demanding environment that it has fostered, filled with unhealthy competition. With all of these in mind, there will be less demand placed on such intervention programs. Now, as we close the presentation, Soren Kierkegaard, a famous Danish philosopher, once stated, while we live in an objective reality, humans experience that reality subjectively. As such, the most important human capacity is that of making the choice, which parallels the perception formed by rigorous collegiate study. With this in mind, it is up to the educators and policymakers to change such collegiate study, whether it be college level courses or advanced college courses, to better suit the increasing competitive education system. All educational policies and structures should be done with the students in mind, ensuring that they have the ability to form effective per perceptions of reality later on in life and that their mental health is not compromised at the expense of performing well in school. Mental health, especially in the minds of students and young adults, needs to be preserved for the sake of their careers and the advancement of society as a whole. Uh, these are my references for the presentation. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I do hope that you enjoyed my presentation. Uh, and here are any credentials in case you would like to contact me. Uh, thank you very much and have a great day. Hmm.